So you have your .NET application code, you have your Azure application infrastructure ready. Now it's time for us to go ahead and use GitHub Actions to deploy that application code to Azure. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Cloud with Chris. You're with me, Chris Reddington, and we will be talking about all things cloud. So we're carrying along our journey very nicely here. We've gone ahead, deployed code into GitHub or pushed code into GitHub. Uh, we've made some example GitHub action workflows and evolved those now to go and deploy some ARM templates. We're going to continue that evolution now as we continue moving forward and actually deploy the application code onto that infrastructure that we've gone and made there. So let's go ahead and carry on with our screen sharing here and we'll just remove the uh, the pop-up banner. So um, we now need to go ahead and deploy our application code on top of what we've got here. So once again, we're actually uh, pretty sorted in terms of some of the examples that are out there for us to go and look at and use very quickly. Um, so if I once again just navigate back to these uh, github.com slash Azure slash actions page, um, you will see that on here there is an action uh, for Azure Web Apps, a web app deploy Azure action. And uh, if we just take a look down here, you can see there's a whole load of scripts and samples here on how we can do that, for example, using Node, etc. Um, but there are some other examples here using .NET, Node, Java, Python, PHP, Docker. Uh, and because this is all uh, open source, you know, this is all something that is available on GitHub for you to go and consume. If there's an example that you don't see there yet, all it takes is a pull request to add another template to go and help people in the community there. So we're, of course, going to go ahead and use the, uh, the .NET uh, example here. And rather than take this exact uh, sample, we're going we're gonna to build upon, I guess, what we've been doing already here. So we are going to take uh, a majority of, of this information here, of this sample, uh, but we're going to use it within the, uh, the action workflow that we already have. So if I just uh, close a couple of these extra tabs down here, uh, you can see what we're going to do uh, if I just paste this in for a moment. There we go. Um, you can see that we're actually making it so that there's multiple jobs inside of the GitHub Actions workflow, or multiple, uh, yeah, multiple jobs. So we've got the uh, execute sample stage, and then we've got the build and deploy stage. But now we could maybe change it to something like, um, you know, deploy infrastructure, as an example. And then we might have build and deploy application. So you can see then what we do is we use the actions uh, checkout master task again, as we mentioned last time, we need that to pull the code from our repository. Uh, then we have this tasks here to go and set up .NET Core on our actual uh, task runner that is running in GitHub. And then we have just some tasks to go ahead and uh, run a .NET build and publish. And then we have uh, some additional uh, steps down here then around uh, using publish profile credentials. And we'll come back to that one in just a moment. So let's just navigate back because we also need to add these environment uh, specific configuration to our GitHub Action workflow. And the reason for that, if I just add this in first, is you'll see within this workflow, we're referencing this env dots, uh, et cetera, et cetera, information here. So for the web app name, for the web app package path, uh, and for the, um, yeah, it's just actually uh, the .NET version there as well. So what we can do is we can go ahead and just change the path of where that web app package path is going to be. Um, so because we're going from our source directory, we'll want to go ahead and uh, change that to source. And the web app name, of course, uh, we used some kind of GUID, which is representing our web app. So we just need to go and make sure that's populated correctly. Um, so if we go and find that one right here, it's going to be the 
website that we want, not the app service plan, by the way, just in case you are following along in your own time. And there we go. So there is one other thing that we need. We need the uh, publish profile secret for this application. And the way that you get that, if you go into the website in uh, the Azure portal here, you can go ahead and get the publish profile from right here. I can double click on that, of course. And once again, this will be gone by the time I, uh, I go ahead and uh, publish the video, so you won't be able to push to my web app there. Uh, but what I do once again is I come back to my repository, go into my settings, create some secrets here, and we need to create a new secret, and it's called Azure underscore web app underscore publish underscore profile. Azure underscore web app, there we go. And we paste that in. Lovely. So that is now done. We have the published profile there. The one thing that we just need to double check and verify here um, is how it's going to go ahead and run. In fact, let's go and trigger um, the workflow first and you'll see what I mean here. Um, so let's go ahead and just change this to say something like um, added the application deployment stage. So we'll go and add that step in there and we'll go and push that. So if I just go ahead and uh, navigate back to our project here and take a look at the actions. And now you'll see there's uh, something is going on here. So the workflow is not valid, unexpected value, da 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 da, da. Runs on is already defined. So that's because uh, of the way that I've set up my workflow file. I haven't quite done that correctly. Um, so if we just go and take a look exactly at what we've done here, um, I suspect it's because we haven't added that as an element, but I'm just going to double check it just to save us some time, um, comparing with some other examples that I have. Um, because as I've mentioned previously, I have the memory of a fish and uh, I don't remember some of these intricacy details sometimes. So let me just go ahead, double check that here. Uh, so it should be running uh, as expected with that syntax. It might just be because of the white space that we have there actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and change that to deploy infrastructure there. Change, ah, I can tell you exactly what it is, actually. It's because of our indentation. You always need to be careful on that with the ammo. I didn't spot that the first time around. There we go. So let's go ahead and uh, try that initial push once again there. Um, yeah, if anyone's listening has ever done any work with Kubernetes, uh, you will, of course, feel the pain on, uh, on the YAML side of things and indentation there. So uh, I'm expecting that we might have some challenges with this build and deploy step. Uh, and you'll see why in a moment. I suspect that it's going to try and do the .NET uh, build and publish from the main, um, the main folder of our repository, so we will get a failure. Um, there are ways around fixing that. Um, but I just want to kind of show that one first. Uh, interestingly, we've also had the same problem for the infrastructure there as well. Uh, because ah, <laughs> when I updated, I must have uh, cut out some of the... Uh, yes, I did. My bad. Uh, I cut out some of the text of the file name there. Um, and I, I always find this is one of the main things with uh, these automated pipelines that you go and build is that a lot of the time is actually getting the initial run right. And as soon as you've done that, uh, then it's nice and easy to actually go and get things running there from a later point. So as we suspected, the build and publish step uh, not quite working as expected. So let's go and take a look and see what is, uh, what is going on there with that one. And let's investigate here. Uh, I might just need to refresh this page because the UI wasn't quite uh, loading for us. And what we can see there is the current working directory does not contain a project or solution file, as we suspected. So 
let's go ahead and just make some changes here and go and do something like uh what's the best way for us to go and do this so we're running here uh using uh just a script rather than any kind of task specifically um so what i'm going to do actually is i'm just going to go ahead and add this command in here this push d command and then i'm also going to add a pop d command right at the end there um, now the reason that i'm doing that is i am um what changing the directory that we're actually running that script in uh, that's effectively what this push d and pop d uh, command is doing so uh, because we have the um that particular folder path that we mentioned earlier the slash source uh, we're going ahead and we're actually changing that there so let's go ahead uh and just slightly with a tweaked version try that again so change path for .NET to run and fix JSON file name. There we go. I'm always a little verbose in my uh, commit messages there, but uh, that's uh, not a bad thing uh, in terms of traceability and tracking for, uh, for people to follow at a later point. So now if we just uh, refresh, there we go. We can see once again, we have our GitHub Actions workflow executing there. And once we come in here to the deploy infrastructure, uh, we should see this time it won't hang on that uh, um, JSON file there uh, because we've actually typed the name correctly this time. Uh, that does always help, I find, when you're trying to, uh, you know, reference files is actually getting the file name right. Who would have thought it? So here we go. We're going to go and uh, do the build and publish step again this time. And let's just check back on the deploy infrastructure. So it looks like now that is running because it's been going for about 13, 14 seconds there. Uh, and it looks like hopefully we're seeing the same with the .NET build and publish task as well. And as I say, I always find it's uh, some of these initial runs where you iterate over things a little bit uh, until you get your working build. Uh, and then from there on, it's generally plain sailing, to be honest. Uh, so what have we done this time? The working directory uh, does not contain a project or solution file. So that still didn't work quite as expected there. So let's go and investigate a little further and see what's going on. So uh, we do push into the correct uh, package path there. Ah, it's because I referenced the wrong variable name. Dear me, there we go. <laughs> so you're seeing this all in real time, folks. Uh, change the file path variable to the correct name there we go you're seeing this all happen in real time in the process i typically find i go through uh so we'll once again go and run that third time is the charm third time lucky as they do say indeed uh, so we'll go and refresh the page there we go we've got that running uh, and as you probably just noticed by the way on the uh previous workflow run if we just jump back into that um, the deploy infrastructure step did work so if we jump back over to azure and take a look at that you can see that uh, we've got a, a succeed there of the uh, template once again um, and what you'll notice is actually nothing's changed you know i didn't have to change the files that i'm deploying i didn't have to change anything in terms of configuration uh because of that arm template and the fact it's idempotent because of the fact that it's that deterministic kind of step uh it's it's able to go ahead and just detect no changes are needed so uh, there we go everything is deployed as expected there so that's all good and working well for us and of course you'll do the same thing again and again and again now And it looks like once again, we have got a failure. Like I say, this is a typically a process that I go through here. Um, so let's go and take a look, see what, uh, what we've got this time.
Okay, so for the interest of time with the video, um, I just went ahead and paused the recording and I've just restarted here uh, and solved a few of the issues that we had going on, so I'll explain those now. Um, number one was that we had uh, a .NET version of 2 point something here in this sample and uh, locally I had built a version with 3, uh, so therefore I needed to update that .NET version. So all I did was I went to uh, my Windows subsystem for Linux to the folder where my uh, .NET Core code is and uh, just checked what version of .NET Core I was running and matched that in my uh, workflow file there. The other thing that I did was I encountered a second error then uh, relating to uh, this final step not being able to find the package that it needs to go and deploy. Um, so the reason uh, previously when I did this was I had uh, in this release output I also had a kind of a subfolder path if you remember. Um, now of course that would be like a nested set of directories there. So what we've done is we've just gone ahead and used some of the standards uh, that I normally go and use actually um, using this kind of output path inside of this folder. So because this uh, .NET build and publish action is running in the context uh, of this particular folder and outputting to this slash output subfolder that means the package is now in this folder slash output and as you'll see when we navigate uh, back over here to uh, the github action workflows you will see that uh, this all ran absolutely fine here so uh as I say, it's some of that little bit of iteration in the very beginning as you're building those workflow files or pipelines, whichever kind of DevOps tooling you're using uh, to deploy your workloads. You often find it's the beginning, there's a bit of upfront investment. And then uh, once you've got that working, then it generally uh, keeps on working. So let's just take stock then. We now have an application that is working as expected uh, if we navigate to our web page. So we've got the .NET Core MVC application running there, which is great. Uh, now, of course, we're not over with our journey because there are other GitHub actions for Azure that we can go and use. Uh, so what we'll be doing over the next few sessions is taking a look at how things like Azure App Config or Key Vault could be used within our GitHub Actions workflow uh, as part of our application deployment process. So please tune in for those when they appear up on YouTube and on the website www.cloudwithchris.com and of course if you are enjoying the series uh, please do subscribe and please do follow because it really does encourage me to make more of this content and uh, broaden the reach here. So thanks again for tuning in and until next time, bye for now.